And now let's start begin to look at you know, some samples of what people do in terms of statistics. Okay, again, this is not biostatistics, this is merely statistics. So data presentation. The data obtained by measuring, for example, the age of 21 randomly selected students enrolled in freshman courses at a university could be presented as the data list. What you see here is 21, eight, the age of 21 students, okay, and it's just presented at random, 18, 18, 19, 18, 20, etc. So you just present it at random. So how do you present this data? Well, one is you can present it as a set with elements of the set in the exact same order, in the exact same order as these are presented to you. So you see it's 18, 18, 19, 19, 19, etc. Ends in 17, 19, ends in 17, 19. Well, this is a bit random, right? There are better ways in which you might present it. Now, this is a small sample. This, you know, 21 numbers, okay, fine. They can be presented in any way. But what if you had 2,100 numbers? You didn't want to just you know, write a big list of 2,100 numbers, okay? And so what you would do is you would present it as a frequency table. So, for example, you have the list of ages that you have in here, that is, you know, they range from the low of 17, and you write them in a particular order, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, there is none, and 24. You might write 23 just to make life easy and just put a zero here. And the frequency is how many students ha are of this age. Okay, so what happens now is you, because you have this frequency table, you can order all of this and you can make this a lot more concise. Okay, remember in this particular case, you have, let's say you had 2100 students all ranging from 17 to 24. Okay, that would be a really long list, but your frequency table representation would still be exactly the size, except that these numbers would be more and you would have to add a 23 in here. Okay, now, here's another way of presenting, is called the stem and leaf diagrams. Let's say 30 students in a statistics class took a test and made the following scores. Now, re now remember, when you go from 21 to 30, it immediately becomes really big, really weird, right? So 30 students in a statistics class took a test and made the following scores, okay? How do you represent this really well? Well, you can represent this as what is called a stem and leaf diagram. So what you see here is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, what does this mean? It means that these represent, this number represents the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. And so now what you see here is 2, and this is the units digit. And it tells you that there is a score somebody did get a 25 so two is to represent the 20s and just five just one of them and three there is nothing nothing a zero doesn't mean it okay zero is actually is actually relevant here so three that nobody got in the 30s one student got 40 one student got 58 three students made 69 68 69 and many students in the 70s students in the 80s lots of several students in the 90s one two three four five nine now remember this is not ordered Okay, and one student made a hundred. Actually, two students made a hundred. So it's ten and zero, hundred. Again, tens, tens, hundreds. Okay, and these are the units place. Now, you could have a representation of this such that it is ordered. Same number, it doesn't really matter. There's no, but it's odd, ordering in this case is really nice because that randomness goes away. This is the same, this is, this is a stem and leaf representation of the same of the same uh, uh, data set of scores, but except you order the numbers because it, it feels a lot better to say, well, one student got a, two students got a 70, one student got a 71, three students got a 73, one student got a 74, one student got a 76, one student got a 77, and one student got a 78. You see how this representation is? Now you understand that, you know, if you could do take a stem and leaf diagram and create some sort of a stem and leaf diagram representation, and a frequency data table that you could make this a lot more concise, okay? And that is what we are beginning to see here. Now you take that stem and leaf diagram and you turn it on its side, okay? And you get scores like this. And this is what is called a frequency histogram. A graph that uses vertical columns to show frequencies, how many times each score occurs, okay? And there should not be any gaps between bars. So it tells you that, you know, 10 people got in the 70s, OK? 
Okay, one person got in the 20s, nobody in the 30s. So the same score, one in the 40s, one in the 50s. See, it, it, it coincides with one. Okay, three people in, in the 60s, several people in the 70s, 80s, and two people still, see, two people got in the hundreds. Okay, there is a, a relative frequency histogram which works slightly differently. So if you remember this, this are, these, are, these frequencies are numbers which are kind of gross numbers, right? Now you want to find out how this is, how this is, how you get the relative frequencies. So for example, you will add all the scores, you will add all the scores or at least the, the scores in the tens, 50s, 60s, 70s, etc. And then divide it by, divide each score by that particular number right by that total number that you get so what you get here is now you have relative frequency which is frequency in percentages okay how often something happens in percentages so now you see the percentage the representation is still the same okay the representation is still the same but it's a percentage of the total scores okay it's a it's a representation of the total scores and so you see the, the characteristics, the shape, etc., are still the same, but the numbers on the y-axis change because this is about a, a percentage. Now, what you begin to see here is how do you go from a histogram to what is called a Gaussian curve or a bell curve? And you see, for example, a small sample, you have this histogram, and then you have a medium sample, which is histogram. These are still discrete. These are still discrete. And then you have a large sample where you still see these discrete bars in terms of the frequencies, right? Just like we saw in the histogram, frequency, relative frequency histogram. And then this, this, this discretion becomes continuous when you go with a very, very, very large sample in terms of the distribution. But notice something about the distribution. It still has this kind of a bell curve shape, right? And this is... I mean, this is essentially the law of nature. No matter what you do, no matter what measurement you take, no matter what parameter you're looking at over a very large sample, you're always going to get people at the extreme positive end. Most of your population, now we define population in the statistical way that is relevant, that's the population that is being considered, is going to, you know, the majority is going to be around the average and a smaller number is going to be on the negative end.